Welcome to Brinkley's Book Nook. Today I'm going to be reviewing Noodleheads Do the Impossible by Ted Arnold. In this book, the Noodlehead's mother says that if they count all the stars in the night sky that they can walk around the world. This is the sixth Noodleheads book, but you can read them out of order. Uh, it's a graphic novel. It is an easy read, especially if you like stupid humor. This will not go on my birthday list because it's so silly and short, but it is definitely a good read to check out at your public library. Next, I'll be reviewing Fart Quest, Level 3, The Dragon's Dookie by Aaron Reynolds. In this book, magical items pooped out by a dragon are way more powerful than normal magical items. So in this quest, they have to go sift through dragon poo to get a magical item and so much more. This is the third book, but I hope there will be one more. It has plenty of pictures, but it's still an advanced read. I love this book, and it is definitely going on my birthday list. Next, I'll be reviewing Hatchet by Gary Paulson. This book has no pictures, and it is a more serious read, and it is about this little boy who survives a plane crash and has to survive in the wilderness with only a hatchet. My dad read this book when he was little, and a friend from church also suggested that I read it. I was a little hesitant at first, but I'm glad that I read it, and I think everyone should read it too. Well, I think everyone should read this. It will not be going on my birthday list, because I think it is a little too serious for me. Next, I will be reviewing Mr. Limoncello's Great Library Race by Chris Grabenstein. This is the third book, and I believe there are two more to come, so I hope I get to read them. This is a more advanced read, so there are no pictures. The reason I like this Mr. Limoncello's book is because the characters play a game called a fact-finding frenzy, where they have to find facts about famous people, such as Abraham Lincoln, Amelia Earhart, and Michael Jordan. The winners of this contest will get to go on a world tour with the holographic people that they found facts about. I really like this book and it is going on my birthday list with all the rest of the Limoncello books. Next I'll be reviewing Ichabog by J.K. Rowling. This book is a more of an advanced read and here's one thing I really liked about the book. It was illustrated by children. Even though little children wrote the pictures, I had trouble getting into it, and I didn't like it because there was so much lying. Next week, I'll be reviewing The Great Pet Heist, How to Save a Queendom, Stick Dog Takes Out Sushi, and Stick Dog Comes to Town. Now I will read you my traditional Grimm's fairy tale. The Dog and the Sparrow. A sheep dog had not a good master, but on the contrary, one who let him suffer hunger. As he could stay no longer with him, he went quite sadly away. On the road, he met a sparrow who said, Brother dog, why art thou so sad? The dog replied, I am hungry and have nothing to eat. Then said the sparrow, Dear brother, come into town with me, and I will satisfy thy hunger. So they went into the town together, and when they came in front of a butcher's shop, the sparrow said to the dog, Stay here, and I will pick a bit of meat down for thee. And he alighted on the stall, looked about him to see that no one was observing him, and pecked and pulled and tore so long at a piece which lay on the edge that it slipped down. Then the dog seized it, ran to a corner, and devoured it. The sparrow said, Now come with me to another shop, and then I will get thee one more piece that thou mayest be satisfied. When the dog had devoured the second piece as well, the sparrow asked, Brother, dog, hast thou had enough? Yes, I have had meat enough, he answered, but I have no bread yet. Said the sparrow, thou shalt have that also. Come with me. They took him to a baker's shop and pecked out a couple of little buns till they rolled down. And as the dog won still more, he led him to another stall and again got bread for him. When that was consumed, the sparrow said, Brother, dog, hast thou now had enough? Yes, he replied, now we will walk a while outside the town. Then they both went out onto the highway. It was, however, warm weather, and when they had walked a little way, the dog said, I am tired and would like to sleep. Well, do sleep, answered the sparrow, and in the meantime, I will sit myself on a branch. 
So the dog lay down on the road and fell fast asleep. Whilst he lay sleeping there, a wagoner came driving by who had a cart with three horses laden with two barrels of wine. The sparrow, however, saw that he was not going to turn aside, but was staying in the wheel track in which the dog was lying. So it cried, Wagoner, don't do it, or I will make thee poor. The wagoner, however, growled to himself, Thou wilt not make me poor. And he cracked his whip and drove the cart over the dog, and the wheels killed him. Then the sparrow cried, Thou hast run over my brother dog and killed him. It shall cost thee thy cart and horses. Cart and horses indeed, said the wagoner. What harm canest thou do me? And drove onwards. Then the sparrow crept under the cover of the cart and pecked so long at the same bun hole that he got the bun out. And then all the wine ran out without the driver noticing it. But once when he was looking behind him, he saw that the cart was dripping and looked at the barrels and saw that one of them was empty. Unfortunate fellow that I am, cried he. Not unfortunate enough yet, said the sparrow, and flew on to the head of one of the horses and pecked his eyes out. When the driver saw that, he drew out his axe and wanted to hit the sparrow. But the sparrow flew into the air and he hit his horse on the head and it fell down dead. Oh, what an unfortunate man I am, cried he. Not unfortunate enough yet, said the sparrow. And when the driver drove on with two horses, the sparrow again crept under the cover and pecked the bun out of the second cask. So all the wine was spilt. When the driver became aware of it, he again cried, a oh, one unfortunate man I am, but the sparrow replied, Not unfortunate enough yet, and seated himself on the head of the second horse and pecked his eyes out. The driver ran up to it and raised his axe to strike, but the sparrow flew into the air and the blow struck the horse which fell. A oh, one unfortunate man I am, not unfortunate yet enough yet, said the sparrow, and lighted on the third horse's head and pecked out his eyes. The driver, in his rage, struck at the sparrow without looking around, and did not hit him, but killed his third horse likewise. Oh, what an unfortunate man I am, cried he. Not unfortunate enough yet, answered the sparrow. Now I will make thee unfortunate in thy home, and flew away. The driver had to leave the wagon, standing, and full of anger and vexation, went home. Ah, said he to his wife, what misfortunes I have had. My wine has run out, and the horses are all three dead. Alas, husband, she answered, what a malicious bird has come into the house. It has gathered together every bird there is in the world, and they have fallen on our corn up there and are devouring it. Then he went upstairs, and thousands and thousands of birds were sitting in the loft, and had eaten up all the corn, and the sparrow was sitting in the midst of them. Then the driver cried, oh, what an unfortunate man I am. Not unfortunate enough yet, answered the sparrow. Wagoner, it shall cost thee thy life as well and flew out. Then the wagoner had lost all his property, and he went downstairs into the room, sat down behind the stove, and was quite furious and bitter. But the sparrow sat outside in front of the window and cried, Wagoner, it shall cost thee thy life. Then the wagoner snatched the axe and threw it at the sparrow, sparrow, but it only broke the window and did not hit the bird. The sparrow now hopped in place, hopped in, placed itself on the stove and cried, Wagoner, it shall cost thee thy life. The latter, quite mad and blind with rage, smote the stove in twain. And as the sparrow flew from one place to another, so it fared with all his household furniture, looking glass, benches, table, and at last the walls of his house. And yet he could not hit the bird. At length, however, he caught it in his hand. Then his wife said, Shall I kill it? No, cried he, that would be too merciful. It shall die much more cruelly. And he took it and swallowed it whole. The sparrow, however, began to flutter about in his body and fluttered up again into the man's mouth. Then it stretched out its head and cried, Wagner, it shall still cost thee thy life. The driver gave the axe to his wife and said, Wife, kill the bird in my mouth for me. The woman struck, but Mr. Blow, and hit the Wagner right on his head, so that he fell dead. But the sparrow flew up and away.